you know, you live with a multiple national award winning actor. <laughs> Did you guys ever exchange notes on acting? No. Kabhi no, nahi. We have so much else to talk about. Do bachche hain, ghar hai, do kutte hain, char gaadiyan hain. So, itna sara kuch aa jata hai beech mein ki waqt nahi milta acting ke liye waqt nahi milta. It's like I can't act now. <laughs> Kajol, it's so lovely to have you on Now Binging. Thank you so much. My uh, pleasure. First of all, congratulations on your streaming debut, The Trial, Kanoon Pyar Dhoka. Pyar Kanoon Dhoka. Pyar Kanoon Dhoka. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's just so <laughs> dramatic. It just sounds all sorts of fabulous. Yeah. It's got it's got lots of vibes going. Yes, yeah. it does. <laughs> Now, you know, I saw a bunch of interviews and of course we also did an interview when the show released. Hmm. and you talked about how of course streaming is giving options to viewers but you said it's also holding actors up to higher standards mm. and i want to ask you about that like did you mean that long form is inherently more challenging or you know Not what more, did you mean I, i wouldn't know about more challenging but i just feel that it's a platform for all kinds of cinema that's what really what i meant is that it is a platform for all kinds of cinema so so when you have or when you say ott it actually means cinema from all over the world really yeah. and it's all over the country as well so you're not only talking about hindi films that are seen in theaters you're talking about films that are that there are marathi films there are malayalam films there are telugu films and fortunately they're all dubbed in a language that we all can understand or that only we can understand so it's it's a very very a vast platform and when you see so many performances from so many different there's japanese there's korean there's french yeah i mean they're all different kinds of cinema that you're watching together suddenly you are not held up to only the hindi film standard ah uh, that's what you meant that's what it's i meant it's global now it is it is global it is actually an international standard that uh, you have to work up to because it will fall a little flatter if you don't hold yourself up to that standard you know you talked about how for the trial uh, suparn the director had cameras everywhere mm. so in the in the courtroom scenes you were actually shooting it like a play right right, right. and it's sushmita talked about the same thing in arya when she shot with ram madhwani the mm. first season she said it was it was like that there just cameras everywhere and you keep going wherever naturally and organically you want to go mm. I was it's thinking it's not natural and organic at all. I want to just tell you that. <laughs> just take that line out of there because it's not natural it's still, and organic. It's plotted. It's plotted, studied and acted well. <laughs> But I was thinking Kajol when you started, we didn't even have bound scripts. No, we didn't. We actually didn't. So is it hard because like I remember once Rishi Kapoor had told me that he had a very tough time with Shakun on Kapoor and Sons. Hmm. because he could not get used to this digital retake 50 retake he was like for me it came out in the first two or three retakes, takes yeah. and then i was very it was tough yeah. is it hard for you to adjust to these new sort of ways of work or have you just evolved with them i think it's i wouldn't say it's hard but i think challenge accepted really really and i think it's great that uh, actors have to adjust we have to it's our job to be able to do it 50 times over and yes it's bloody irritating when it happens but uh, but that's the whole point that it's of course there has to be an inherent trust with your director to make sure that the edit keeps the best of your performance and yeah. not the worst of it but uh, i think that's where uh, that's where you have as an actor have to um, adapt to different working ways also it's not a film at the end of the day it is about it i, I think the toughest part in fact um, in working on the trial as a series was to remember where i was in i mean where does the scene come you know in the arc yeah in the arc where does the scene come where is your uh, what are you supposed to be doing here what are you supposed to be feeling here in fact that i felt was the toughest part to figure out exactly where i was stick to it and then go from there because the next scene that you're doing after this one gets over could be right at the beginning or could be right in the middle or could be the end yeah so it was in fact the scene, the sh- uh, the last shot scene of the film was actually one of the the ones from the first episode 
that we did. So it was a completely like... Yeah, you're all over. Yeah, you're all over the place. In fact, that I felt was the most confusing and unnerving part as an actor. Because when you're shooting a film, you have two hours of the film, of which you are most probably part of 45 minutes to an hour max. And in that one hour, you have a very clear idea of where you're going from A to B to C to D. You have a very clear idea. The script is small enough to stay in your head. You know sure. exactly what you're doing. You know exactly where everything is going. So it's much easier for you to plan and plot, even if they shoot it differently. Because they, they didn't shoot films yeah, chronologically eight either. No? 10 episodes, it becomes very Correct. difficult. That's very hard to remember. It's very hard to remember. Yeah. How can you remember? It's like remembering eight scripts and then trying to plot yourself in those eight scripts and you know, where are you going? What are you doing? That I felt was the toughest. No, and it's amazing that you're doing this today. And I remember reading this interview of yours where you talked about how in the mid-90s, after Udhar Ki Zindagi, you felt completely burnt out. Yeah. And you consciously wanted to be the two scenes, three songs wala heroine. Of because you I said, did. I did. I did. I did. I needed a break. I think, uh, you know, you really need a break at points. You know, yeah. you want to do just enough to, you know, kind of keep you happy also and not stress you out too much either. But then you said you discovered a way where you don't have to give all of yourself. Yeah, in the that's act. when I started to learn how to act. <laughs> Till then, I was like, you know, no, it has to be organic and it has to be honest and huh. all <laughs> that and all that. Yeah, but then I had to learn how to act. I had to actually like put the effort in to learn the technique of not having to give everything of yourself all the time. What is this technique? I think it's called acting. <laughs> <laughs> I think they teach it nowadays. <laughs> so, meaning, so, iske pehle, you were just going full on. Yeah, it had nothing. I just full on all the time. All the time. And it was... Like I said, it was really, really, and um, I remember having this discussion with Shahrukh actually, and he was the one who actually told me, he's like, you know, just calm down. Like, he just calmed down. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, very brash at that. Like, what are you talking about? You know, this is, a, it's like, you know, you really need to learn how to, <laughs> the technique of acting. And I was like, what is the technique of acting? I don't know what you're talking about. And then later, I really remembered him, you know, and I really, it's just like, shit, he was right. And, you know, and I should have uh, learnt it better. But you were so, self-taught when you did? Completely, completely. At every point, I was self-taught. So, I think I learned a lot from looking at other people around me. I learned a lot from, like, I learned a lot from Bekhudi. Mm. I would say with Rahul Uncle, I think he was my first teacher teacher. So, he would tell me, okay, the camera is here. This is how you need to stand. This is how much you need to move your face. Otherwise, the camera, you will have to keep doing retakes because your face, it, the close-up is so tight. So you can't put your chin lower than this. You have to keep your chin at this particular angle. So there was a lot of technique that was taught to me as far as body language was concerned. But as far as what you gave to the scene or what uh, came organically and what doesn't come organically, that I had to really, that was trial and error <laughs> through a lot of films. Fortunately, nobody saw the errors and, uh, you know, kind of just... Uh, Gave me the benefit of the doubt. And now you can compartmentalize? Now you... I am, I am much better at it. Yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm fabulous at it. But I'm much, much better at it. But Kajol, you've never been sort of uh, precious about your acting. You've never said, I'm an artist. Oh, uh, I'm an artist. Yeah. <laughs> I've chosen to when to say that. <laughs> I use it sporadically to my, uh, to my benefit. Let me put it that way. <laughs> when convenient. <laughs> when convenient. <laughs> but, you know, you've been so sort of almost practical about what you do. You said, you told me also that it's mm. not my calling. Uh, you know, it's just something I'm very good at. It pays me well. And it's so funny. You said in some interview that I'm the queen of comebacks. I'm the queen of let's take a nap. I'm the queen of let's have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm always happy to take a break. Anytime you give it to me. Right now also I'm willing. <laughs> but you said that the things that you do outside of acting, hmm. right? The travel, the children, the just living life hmm. is what helps you to be the amazing actor that you are. I said all that? I don't even remember that. <laughs> okay. How <laughs> I'll have to go back to this. You, you did. But tell me about this translation. Why does an actor need to live life to act well? The fact that you're asking me this question is, uh, I feel an answer in itself. You need to. You need to live the life 
live, live the life. Look at life as well if you want to imitate it, right? Because life imita uh, art imitates life. So, I mean, it is that. It's as simple as that. If I don't sit at a restaurant and if I don't notice the people around me, how will I ever be able to imitate them? Or how will I ever be able to learn from it or learn from my own life for that matter if I don't occasionally take my soul food breaks and my naps and my <laughs> the rest of my living my life to come back as a better actor. I really, really, truly feel that uh, most actors, most really, really good actors have that innate ability to, you know, sit back and recharge themselves. Yeah. Uh, in the best way possible, you know, take that time out and just take a really, really good look at life so that you understand what you have inside you to contribute also. But you also need, I think, Ajwal, to be a secure actor to take that time off and recharge. Absolutely. But I feel that more than, more than a secure actor, you need to understand that everybody needs that. Every mm -hmm. creative person needs a break. You can't keep creating 24-7, 365 days of the year. You need to, I think if you speak to a painter, he has phases, right? They paint, 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 paint for six months and have a show and then he's like, okay, now my I'm next done. show will be like after two years because yeah. I'm going to take a six month break or I'm going to take a year's break to sit and find out what, you know, I want to, I, what I want to paint. Mm. And that's the same way with writers, with painters. So why not with actors? No, but in this business, Kajol, it's so much about being seen, right? Uh, and that's exactly why I took the two scenes and three song ka break in the middle as well. But you were never insecure? Mm, no, I wasn't. I really wasn't. Because I'm generally very happy with myself taking my naps and taking my breaks and knitting and living my life. And no, I wasn't insecure. And is that also why you don't, you're not one of those actors who runs to the monitor? I think the reason that I'm not one of those actors is because I have a very clear view of, because I did work at a time when there were no monitors. So I know exactly what I'm like on uh, screen. I know what I did. At least I know, I know 70 to 80 percent of what I've done. I just, I have a very clear view of it. So I don't really need the monitor. Yes, I do use it occasionally. I do use it occasionally just to see, you know, is everything in place or I feel that, uh, I feel that the vibe of everything is going well or if I can change it in any which way. So maybe I need to see it for a close-up or maybe I need to see it for one wide angle to see if I'm going wrong somewhere or if my stomach is sticking out anywhere. That's really what That's I'm most a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, that's really it, pretty much. I have a very clear viewpoint in my head as to what I play on screen. And those instincts have usually been correct? Yeah, pretty much. I haven't really screwed up too much. Fortunately, I had good directors. So, <laughs> I make sure that they save me whenever they can. Do they get intimidated by you? Or do people still give you direction? I mean, it's been what, 30 yes, years? Yes, of course, of course, they do. And I think that's my first conversation with every director that I have. That, uh, to yes, so I am an actor. And I'm very clear about that. That uh, the director is the captain of the ship. And uh, whether you get intimidated or not, the whole point is that we're all working towards a good film. So if it's not working for you, tell me. In fact, that's one of my first conversations that I have with all my directors. That please don't take it upon your head that you cannot say something to me. I'm an actor at the end of the day. If you want me to do this, I will do it. Because you are the final authority on the film. I'm not the director. I don't want to be the director. I want to be an actor. You know, you live with a multiple national award-winning actor. <laughs> Did you guys ever exchange notes on acting? No. Kabini. Kabini. But I'm sure say nahi. Shuru say nahi. I think we're both very, very secure as people. So you've never gone to each other and said that, oh, you know, do this scene this way. We never do that. We just never talk about it. Just never happens. We have so much else to talk about. Two children, two dogs, four cars. So, it's so much in the middle of it. It's not time for acting. It's like, I can't act now. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, uh, let's say it's a performance you've really liked of yourself. Would, hmm. you, would you seek feedback or, or do you praise each other? Of course. 
Of course we do. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of his work. He's seen very little of mine. Really? So, yeah. Why is this? I don't know. I really need to I, I need to take him to task about it. But honestly, it's there's just um, you know, no, I don't seek validation in that respect from him over there. But yes, I do. He has he does come up to me and he he saw Salam Venki as well and he's like, you know, I it's one of your best performances ever ever ever. So, I mean, I know for a fact that he does consider me he does respect me immensely as an actor and uh, yeah you've also enough. been directed by him yes i have what I was have. that like that was awesome actually he is one of the best directors that i've ever worked with and i keep telling him i was like you need to you take me back into your movie again we need to do a film together but i mean i think he's has to find the perfect script for that which he hasn't come across you know what i thought was amazing that you said ki dblj released earlier this year mm. right and you said i couldn't go see it because i was shooting mm. Mm. what did that feel like ajol to to just have something that you did 30 years ago mm. still be speaking to the audience absolutely but you are still at the top of your game doing what you do so well did you just take a moment and say well done i did I did. I thought it was so cool. It and is. It is, and I think uh, I really think I'm blessed. I truly think that I'm blessed, and I have this really this attitude of gratitude that thirty thirty years or I don't know twenty eight, twenty nine years. Yeah, now. yeah. It'll be thirty in ninety five. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry. Two yeah, thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Twenty twenty five. It'll be thirty yeah. years. Twenty eight years. I would right. say twenty eight huh. years down the line, and thirty two years of acting, and I'm still. I still feel like. Um, I still feel relevant. I am relevant. I am still loved. I mean, wherever I go, I still have uh, all this immense amount of, uh, you know, love that is there from the regular, normal people around me, and and it's a love with which is which is really unconditional. I've literally grown up in front of them. I've had children in front of them. I've fallen. I've broken my foot. ये किया है वो किया मतलब I have done such crazy shit. My whole life is like there. in front of them literally and um, you know everybody's loved me unconditionally throughout so there's this intense amount of uh, gratitude inside me for that you know really. do you ever think about what did you do right what did i do right i don't know lots of people thought i was doing a lot of wrong actually <laughs> What? So I had a like lot of what? contrary advice. Oh, I had a lot of contrary advice. Oh, you should be doing this film. You should not be doing this film. Why are you doing this film? Why aren't you doing that film? Why are you getting married? Why are you not getting married? What is happening? Why are you having a child? I mean, every point in my life, I think, uh, was questioned by everybody around me. Was uh, considered not correct at that point in time, and. Uh, So yeah, I don't know what I did right. <laughs> really. Did you just listen to yourself? Pretty much, and I'm pretty stubborn that way. I mean, if I think that it's right for me, it is right for me. So I mean, nobody can convince me that it's wrong unless they tell me that you know somebody's going to die because of it. Mm. So, I'm so you just followed stubborn. your heart. I did. I did pretty much. I did what were, what I felt was honest and right for me, and that may have meant. um uh, you know that it was not the most popular opinion at that point in time or it may not have been the most correct opinion according to anybody else yeah or uh, according to i don't know the commercial aspect of it but if i felt that it was right then i did that and did this commercial aspect ever influence your choices did you ever feel like you were part of this i want to be number 1 I, you know that level of no, ambition i never wo tha hi nahi wo tha hi nahi wo bachpan se nahi tha i don't have that ambition only i i truly don't my ambitions are different i would say i wouldn't say i'm ambitionless but my ambitions are different what are your ambitions my ambitions are to sleep more to sleep my 8 hours 10 hours every day regardless of everything else to have my coffee in peace and not in pieces and uh, to to be a better person to face what i have to face with a lot of grace and dignity and uh, and to bring up my children well and uh, you know make sure that i mean they are everything that they need to be or want to be in life so yeah i have those are my ambitions those are my goals so it, they may not be commercially viable 
<laughs> they may not be, uh, they may be not uh, exactly most popular goals of the day, but they're mine. You know, my earliest memory of you is, I remember coming to interview you at Mehboob Studio in the 90s. Okay. Ha, mujhe bhi bahut fleeting li yaad hai. It's like a vague memory. And uh, your person sort of let me into the vanity van and you were reading. Okay. And you had this big book with you and you looked at me and you looked so irritated that shit, now I'll have to put this book down <laughs> and talk to this woman. <laughs> So I funny. still feel that I still feel that I carry my books everywhere with me and I I, I really am one of those people who it's just like you know it's it's always a constant fight between the book yeah. and real life and like I have to go back I have to go back and I have to work out also I have to get ready also I have to do this I have to go for work also how I gotta finish the book and then do all that <laughs> see I'm a little better at controlling my addictions now but do you think the reading has also made you the actor you are? The reading has definitely given me a better vocabulary. <laughs> but, <laughs> but also expanded your imagination. Yes, no? absolutely. And uh, I think when you read, like when you read fiction, you're reading, you're reading so many books, you're reading so many characters. It's as good as sitting at a cafe in the middle of, uh, you know, wherever. In and the observing. World and observing yeah. everybody around you. Because there's everything in that, from body language to atmosphere to vibe to dialogue to story, script. Um, you know, you're actually watching a movie in your head. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I do. I do believe that it has contributed to my most vivid imagination. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the first episode of The Trial, there's this scene where you're holding your daughters and you say something like, Ma Hena, hmm. Ma Sab Samahalik. Hmm. Is that who you are in life as well? Are you the rock? Pretty much. But I think all mothers have to be, don't they? I think most mothers are, whether they get paid for it or not. But they are pretty much the, you know, the, the rock around which the entire family kind of has to, they have to be there. Mm. There is no two ways about it. And uh, I've pretty much been that for my kids as well. And I think like Ajay must be like a super rock. <laughs> no? Yeah, he's like the mountain. <laughs> He gives me those vibes. I'm just the mountain. The mountain, the man. <laughs> Ajay Devgan. <laughs> you guys ever make fun of him? Of course. I think he makes fun of me. I make fun of him. And, and that's really like the... I, how can you not? Yeah. I've known him since I was 20. It's really? a little long for me to not make fun of him and for him not to make fun of me by <laughs> now. <laughs> You've known him since you were 20? Yeah. That's amazing. That is amazing. I tell him that. <laughs> He's never sort of infected you with this crazy want to direct bug. No. Never. No. In fact, I want to run the other the other direction when I see him with his movies because he becomes so obsessed with it. Yeah. And he, he, he looks like, like that. Yeah. He becomes so obsessed with it that I'm like, I never want to be that obsessed with anything or any, any particular thing that will take over my life for such a long period of time. No. Yeah. It's too much of a I've commitment. Got, yeah, it's too much of a commitment. You know, I've, I've gotten married once. I can't get married again and again to different scripts. <laughs> so what are you now, Kajol, when you're at a stage where, you know, everything that had to be done is done in terms of just achievements, right? You've had the blockbusters. I mean, you have the longest running film of all time. Okay. What now excites you? What kind of makes you say that I'll put this book down and go to a set? I think again, I think it's got to do with good scripts. That's always been something that I want. I want to do a good script. I want to do a quick, I want to do a fast, tight script. That's always been my first major criteria that it has to be the kind of script that I hear that it's like almost like unput, an unput townable book. Like I have to right. imagine myself there. If I don't imagine myself there, then it just doesn't make sense for me to do it. Why am I doing it if I don't imagine myself there? So. But you also said that you'll never work with somebody who you can't kind of communicate with. You said, Absolutely. I don't want to work with people I don't like. But that never becomes like, <clears throat> maybe I'll miss out on something great. Like, it's just not worth it. No, it's not worth it. I've worked with people that I don't like. And I don't think didn't it's go worth well. it. It didn't go well. It really didn't go well. And it was not because of them. It was just because of, I feel, I felt that 
my time uh, was wasted mm. i really felt like it was a waste of my time and it, it, i was truly unhappy why should i put myself willingly through that again yeah yeah so that's just out that's just out no matter how good a script is no it's not it's really not worth it and when you say a good script does it necessarily mean that you need to be the main character or are you willing to kind of do i mean you kill somebody in gupt all those years ago right no, are you willing to experiment absolutely you- i am and i've said that again and again but the point is that if you don't if i get a script and if i get a fabulous script and if i'm playing one role in the script i want that role to be so fabulous that i can't say no to it right even if if it's even three scenes i need those three scenes to be so outstanding that oh my god it's like an oh my god moment you yeah. know Yeah. So if I don't get that, then I don't see the point in doing it. Hmm. But you're not fussed about like, no. I need to be like, you know, not in every all. scene and all the rest of it. No, I don't because I don't believe that any film is around one person. Also, hmm. I don't believe that any film is caters to just one person. Yeah, it's no film is made by one character alone. It's always an amalgamation of all the characters around you. It's always how everybody else. is created around you that makes a film as a whole mm. i never believe that it's only about one person so i always think that if i am if that film even if it has to revolve around me all those people every one of them matters and i believe that with every actor that i work with also i'm like if you're good i'm good yeah and if you're great then i'll be great mm. so i mean i think that's the way that a film gets better and better yeah do you uh, now especially with streaming you know there's there's a writers room there's so many people who work on it do you get involved ever in the writing stages not really no you no. people come to you with a with a complete, complete script. script of course we do work on the scenes when they come out etc when you're shooting them because sometimes when you're on set what's written on paper doesn't work or if it doesn't work it needs to be tweaked hmm. and figured out exactly sometimes the body language doesn't work sometimes you know the way it's written down those lines don't work just because of where you are mm. so then you work around that you work through it you work with something new somebody comes up with an idea somebody comes up with a line that's why i say that a film is always a combination of everybody's ideas mm. and uh, you know thoughts put together that actually make it a film and are there directors now that you really want to work with or is it just the script i don't know enough directors to be very honest <laughs> <laughs> there are so many new directors now yeah. uh, you know earlier there used to be these three top directors that you always want to hear now i don't know what who those three there are not three there are 300 top directors so i think uh, no i don't have any wish list in that uh, department yes i would love to work with uh, mani sir again again no first time but <laughs> but yeah he is uh, there that i would really love to work with him at some point in time hopefully why why mani sir because i just love his aesthetic i love him as a director mm. i think that he has a wonderful wonderful aesthetic as a director and i think that he would probably take something really really new and nice out of a performance from me kajol do you feel like after all these films and like you said 32 years there are still these things that people can get out of you that there is still untapped kajol of course yeah. and i hope to god there will continue to be because yeah. i plan to work till i don't know till whenever i keep getting roles so yeah i plan to work till then so hopefully there will be something new and untapped every time i go on set so you're not you're not committed to working all the time <laughs> but you want to work till the end that De- definitely no two ways about it how lovely yeah that's fantastic and that's and that's i feel like work is a part of your life yeah and it should always be a part of your life i don't expect you to sit down at one point and say that okay this is the last show that i'm doing or you know now binging is at an end <laughs> there will be no more binges in anupama's life <laughs> so i was wondering if temur should be my cut off <laughs> <laughs> when when i do that interview maybe i should say okay but but yeah you you want to work till the end i mean it's Absolutely. so exciting and does streaming <clears throat> kajol give you the confidence that there will be roles because i get more and more nervous about what women are going to end up doing with theatrical but streaming i feel very optimistic i think that generally the the world of cinema fortunately for us um i mean right now 
considering the films that are doing well, um, I have very little hope. <laughs> but <laughs> I wouldn't say very little hope. Actually, I touch wood. We've had a bad year, and it's we've, great that it's they're been, running. Yeah, they're they're doing well. Yeah, the last three months we're really doing well. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's doing well, but I hope it picks up. I hope it picks up enough so that we have really good films doing well. I think that's what's important. Mm -hmm. And uh, like somebody says, I hope they make a Wonder Wise. I said that I think I, said, I hope they make a Wonder Woman in India. I really hope that they make a Wonder Woman in India, and I hope it does 1,000 crores. Yeah. I really hope and pray yeah. that that is the future of our film industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you must see the change in terms of just even conversations around women. Of course, it's not at all close to enough. But do you see that there is enough of a change when it yes. comes to roles, when yes, it comes to... definitely. You know, even in theatrical. Definitely. No two ways about it. I think the biggest... Um, I think the biggest change that I see that I absolutely loved was uh, the fact that I worked with a female DOP. I worked, I, I saw a female paparazzi. I, that was one place where I was like, oh my God, this is like in that middle of the dhakkam dhakki. I saw this woman among all these men yeah. standing and pushing her way through and Taking that you picture, know, taking yeah. pictures on a red carpet. So I was like, oh my God, now I see more of them. Yeah. That the fact that on a set, when you walk onto any set, there are a lot. They, there, there was a point in time where uh, me and my hairdresser would be the only two women on set. I've been on those sets. Exactly. Yeah. So for us to even see 80s or 80s of cameramen, yeah. you know, as women, it's it's an amazing and it's become normal. That's what's so cool about it. Yeah, it's become a norm. It's not it's not a it's not an anomaly anymore. It's not a phenomena anymore. It's a norm wherever you go. And I think that's the biggest step forward that I can think of yeah. in the film industry. Yeah. And I remember Kajol those sets where it was literally three women literally. in in 100, 150 men. But I think we didn't even question it. It Not was just all. the way it was. It was. It was really, we never thought about it. And like I say, feminism <laughs> came much, 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 much later. later. Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Humko to lagta tha, ye hai. This Absolutely. is fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So it's so exciting to just have women. But I think the gap is still with the writing. Mm, I don't know. I really don't know. I think that, I think that you're getting the roles. Yeah. It's, it's not that it's not that it's not being written. It is being written. Like, I would say that for me at least. I don't know what really? everybody else. <laughs> Do people come with you, to you with roles they've written specifically for? You? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's not uh, like I said. So I'm not currently feeling dirt, the dearth. So I have yeah, and I have you know I have good roles coming to me. I have some fantastic writing ahead of me. And um, I'm really, really enjoying it right now. It's a good place. Yeah, it's a good place. How it's lovely. really a good place. How lovely. That's so fantastic. And I don't even need a 26-inch waist. <laughs> Best of all. <laughs> Hannah? Okay, that was a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that great? Yes, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. I love the fact that, uh, you know, you don't need to have, for men and women, I would say, that, uh, you know, you don't need to have the perfect set of features in body or face to uh, become superstars. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the biggest step forward that you can see as an industry that we've taken. Yeah. Yeah. And more steps to go. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to come to our second segment, which is called Binge List. So I know that you're a reader and not a binger, but... What's the last thing you watched and loved? I remember Ajay's film. I remember watching Bola. Bola. Hmm. I remember watching Bola and loving it. I remember, I actually, I liked Runway 34, I think, more than I like Bola. I loved Runway 34. I thought it was a fabulous film. Actually, the last thing that I watched was my own, The Trial. <laughs> that was the last thing that I watched. And so, I loved it. You must watch it. <laughs> Are you? critical of yourself when you see yourself? I am. I am super critical of myself and I always have been. In the, I, I feel that that's something that you have to be brutally honest yeah. with yourself hmm. about. I mean, you can't lie about that. Yeah. So I am. I am brutally honest with myself. And uh, But you can enjoy what absolutely, you're watching. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it'll take me the second time around to enjoy it. Right. The first time around I'm sitting and I'm just like sitting, oh, 
okay, that had to be that, that way. Okay, this can be better this way. Okay, when next I do this, I will do this. So yeah, it's a, more of a cataloging of what you did right and what you did wrong than, uh, than an actual binge watch. <laughs> okay, what's a favorite film adapted from a book? I thought Thornbirds was an awesome adaptation. I thought uh, the Twilight series actually yeah. was a very good adaptation because the book was crap. I couldn't go through one chapter of the book. I just couldn't. I picked it up and I was like, I don't understand why people are buying this book. So I put it back down again. And uh, when I saw the film, I was like, okay, that's not so bad after all. Maybe I could have gone to the 10th or the 20th chapter and skipped the first 19. But uh, yeah, so that I thought was an amazing Was adaptation. an improvement. Was a huge improvement. Huge nice. improvement. Nice. Yeah. Now, you said... Actually, that you don't read anything for improvement. No, I don't. Right. So, you're reading Mills and Boons, you're reading historical romances, which I love. Yeah. I think that's just fab. Do you watch anything for improvement? No. Bilkul nahi. Bilkul nahi. So, jo bhi hai, it's for pleasure. It's for pleasure because I don't think that... I don't think that me watching somebody else play something on screen hmm. is going to make my performance anywhere better because anyways it has to come out of my head yeah whatever I do has to be a completely fictional character you know it's like uh, so that that's just it and uh, I think I have some amazing actors that I watch every day in real life also so <laughs> मतलब लोगों को ही देख लो उतना ही काफी है जो yeah. लोग हमारे इर्द गिर्द होते हैं उनको ही देख लो रोज रोज तो पता चलता है कि मतलब एक्टिंग कितनी बड़ी चीज होती है <laughs> तो इसीलिए तो आई थिंक दैट इट्स यू जस्ट कीप वाचिंग द पीपल अराउंड यू देयर आर सच ऑसम कैरेक्टर्स या अराउंड यू या बट डू यू हैव अ सी सिनेमा दैट कैन सॉर्ट ऑफ बिकॉज़ आई ट्रूली थिंक दैट लाइक देयर हैव बीन फिल्म्स दैट मेक यू इनटू अ बेटर पर्सन यू नो इट एक्सपैंड्स योर हेड इन अ वे that you change your life philosophy absolutely absolutely so, wo, but you don't chase that if that happens it happens uh to be very honest i feel that it takes a lot of effort on my part to sit down to watch a two hour film or a three hour film it just takes a lot of effort on my part and whenever i come up to that decision it's always like acha theek hai you know i have to work out also i have to do this also i have to do that also and i can't stop the film halfway also because then i will get bored and i will not go back to it and so all that um and i don't want to watch films that make me too upset hmm. because i feel like there's so much in life we just need to open a newspaper to cry so i mean you like happy things i like yeah i like happy things i like positive things i like funny things so i've uh, yeah that's who i am Okay, which of Ajay's performance is a favorite? I loved him in Company. I loved him in Bhagat Singh. I loved him in uh, Zakham. Mm. Three awesome, awesome performances. Recently, I would say I liked him in Runway. Th- I really liked him in Runway Thirty Four. I thought he was really, really good in Runway Thirty Four. And um, I think out of all his performances, these stood out. and which of your mother's performances is a favorite my mother's i have not watched too many of my mother's films i have to tell you because i i feel so much for her that i'm never able to separate myself from her and when she cries on screen i just sit in a ball so i have really? no objectivity where she's mm-hmm. concerned i just have zero objectivity where she is concerned she just makes me howl and i think my children feel the same way about me when they see me on screen so they they can't watch so they can't watch either so they they really don't watch my movies they really? watch it they are, yeah they watch it with forward the crying scene and watch it forward this scene are like and then they're like you cry too much in the movies i missed half the film because you were crying for half the film i was like <laughs> but that's ridiculous you should be doing comedies yeah i should be doing comedies i'm going i want to do a comedy next i yeah. really really want to do a comedy next i see wow want to. so so you just you haven't seen like any of the great films she did no i have No, no, I haven't. I wanted. It was to. just too hard. It was just too hard. If one, I couldn't understand why. I, and I'm very jealous. I'm very possessive. I can't understand why these random people are calling her ma and all that. 
I mean, like I don't like all this. I mean, like I've seen Jewel Thief. I loved her in Jewel Thief. Yeah, yeah. I thought she was fantastic in Jewel Thief. Rat Akeli hai. I know she was so good. She was so good. She was so stunning. I I remember watching Hathi Mere Saathi. To of, of course, course. Yeah. of course. Yeah, and I've not spoken to her for like at least like a week after that. After I saw the film, because I was just like, how could you let that elephant die? <laughs> I mean, like I was really so. Like we say, like I can tell you, like if with these two examples, you can make out that you know I'm not exactly objective where my mother is concerned at <laughs> all. I'm completely subjective. <laughs> do you ever, Kajol, uh, when you watch your own work, like you just saw the trial, right? Do you look at yourself? Of course, you're making the checklist. Do this, do this. Do you also admire some of the things you do? Yes, definitely. So you can see that. Yes, that you're a good. What you've done right and what yeah. you've done wrong. Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay, so it's not like just being critic. No, not at all. I think you have to, right? You yeah. have to at some point. Otherwise, why would you want to go on with the profession if you found so much of it wrong? Mm. So no, definitely, I do. I look at it. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking at it as a whole and saying that okay. Like a lot of it was really, really good, and yeah, it needs to be tweaked here and here and here. But a lot of it was really, really good. So you make yourself proud? Yes, definitely. I pat myself on on the back quite often. Well, good for you, because enough women don't do that. No, I do. I I learned it a little late in life, but huh. I do pat myself on the back. Nice, nice. I saw you talking about how much you loved watching uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. I did. Is anime a thing? I love it. I think it's one of the most intelligent forms of writing that we have on TV today. It truly is because I think uh, when you're doing, uh, when you're looking at movies right now, any kind of cinema, per se, you're catering to a storyline which has regular people in it, or maybe like the Marvels, you have different world or whatever, but you're still catering to the masses. Yeah, you're still catering to a certain audience. Mm. But with anime, I feel that they have—they're not catering to any audiences. They are not catering to dumb people. They are not catering. They're not trying to dumb it down to make everybody understand. They are not. Uh, they've just changed the game. They've just changed the game, and uh, and the way they write the concepts that they come up with, the thoughts that they come up with. They, it's just such. Fabulous writing. Yeah, it is really, really fabulous writing. You know, and are you a fan of the comics as well? I can't read them. I can't read manga. I can't. I can't do that opposite. I tried very hard huh. because I was like, you know, it's so great and it's so fabulous the writing and whatever, whatever. And I, I tried to read the opposite side comic and I was just, I just got so. Like I was completely confused. Does this part come before that? Does that come before that? Does the left <laughs> page come first? Does the right page come first? So I, I could not get used to it. I probably could if I put my mind to it, but I just thought it was too much of an effort. I'd rather pick up a book and read the book itself. Do your kids influence your viewing choices at all? Do yes. they introduce you to new things? Yes, absolutely. Like, and what? I love, and I love the fact that uh, I love knowing what they like to watch, and uh, you know, um, what they like. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. Nissa watches a lot of stuff. Uh, she watches a lot of. My son watches more. Nissa doesn't watch as much now, but yeah, my son watches a lot of anime. So the anime thing comes from there. I watch like two episodes of some new anime every four days with him, and uh, yeah, it's fabulous. And what performance of yours are you proudest of? I'm proud of all my performances, yeah. every one of my films so far, because I think it also has to do with what I have given to the film, and I feel that I have been. More than hundred percent honest with each and every one of my performances, uh, regardless of how big, small, and uh, you know inconsequential or consequential they were in every film. So you never slacked off? No, I didn't. Not in front of the camera. I haven't. Really? I haven't. Over thirty-two years. I would. I am proud of myself, and I should put my collar up and pat myself on the back for doing that and for saying it. But I can honestly say that I have not in front of the camera. I just don't know. Something just doesn't let me do that in front of the camera. How lovely! <laughs> okay, last segment. Now, since you portrayed Noanika in the trial, please don't ask me to speak Bengali. Not at all. <laughs> 
I'm going to ask you to defend the following choices uh. made by characters in your films. <laughs> okay, you are now these guys are on trial and you have to defend them. Hmm. Anjali choosing Rahul in Kuch Kuch Hota Hai over Aman. She was young. What can I say? <laughs> she was young. She was reading too many Mills and Boons. You know, young girls these days, hormonal. <laughs> Didn't know what was good for her. Didn't know what was good for her, really. <laughs> Isha attacking Sheetal in Gut. You know, she, I don't blame her in this. I totally don't blame her. I'm on her side. Why didn't her father put her in a straight jacket long back? It's her father's fault, not her fault. That's right. She yeah. was built like this. She's built like that, damn. <laughs> Ajay pushing Seema to her death in Bazigar. But the Dubai story was a tragic backstory. It was a tragic backstory, right? Put it in your head. Yes, for mother. That's right. For mother. Yes, that's acceptable in Hindi cinema. Exactly. Absolutely acceptable. Simran hanging out with this completely unknown boy in a foreign country in DDLJ. Yeah, I know. It was a Euro rail. It was the train's fault. It was the fault of the train. It was the fault of the scenery and it was Switzerland's fault. Yes. She just got carried away. She got carried away. It was the scenery. It was the chocolate. <laughs> nothing... And she had bad eyesight. We saw her wearing specs, didn't this we? This is true. <laughs> this is true. But nothing to do with Shah Rukh's dimples Not and all. Not at all. Nothing. Nothing at all. Palat wala kuch nahi. Do you, by the way, ever get tired of seeing Palat in other movies? Oh, constantly. I'm like, Hello? please change the joke. It's usually like a joke and I'm like, please stop. It just, you need to change this joke around. Can we have a different joke around yeah. it? Can we just please have a different joke? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Zuni meeting Rehan on a blind date literally <laughs> without knowing him at all. How are you defending her choices? Will I defend her choices in the right way possible? I mean, she was blind for heaven's sakes. So? She was blind. So what happens with her? What happens with her? I mean, the choices are less than that, right? Yes. So she didn't have so many choices, right? So Rehan showed up and she went. So Rehan went. Rehan showed up, now then. What is she supposed to do? She's supposed to say, no, don't love me. I don't have another boyfriend. How many boyfriends did she have in line anyways? How many of them were? One of them, Rehan, he got out of the way. Yes, he got out of the way. Kajol, thank you so much. And just keep doing what you do. Thank you. Till then, I was like, you know, no, it has to be organic and it has to be honest and huh. all yeah. that and all that. Yeah, but then I had to learn how to act. I had to actually like put the effort in to learn the technique of not having to give everything of yourself all the time. What is this technique? I think it's called acting. <laughs> <laughs> I think they teach it nowadays. <laughs> Meaning, so, iske pehle, you were just going full on. Yeah, it had nothing. To, I just full on all the time. And um, I remember having this discussion with Shahrukh actually. And he was the one who actually told me, he's like, you know, just calm down. Like, he just calmed down. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, very brash at that. Was, what are you talking about? You know, this is, a, it's like, you know, you really need to learn how to, <laughs> the technique of acting. And I was like, what is the technique of acting? I don't know what you're talking about. And then later, I really remembered him, you know, and I really, it's just like, shit, he was right. Yeah.